The theremin is really, it comes from the cradle of electronic instruments and it is entirely gestural. In its day, it caused panics in theaters, literally. I am authorized to assure you that so far there is no reasonable cause for alarm. When it was introduced in 1929, it actually caused people to faint in concert halls because they thought they were hearing the music of the ether. They thought they were hearing spirits. They were terrified. It was invented at the end of the First World War, around 1918, by a Russian inventor by the name of Lev Sergeyevich Termin, whose name is anglicized to Leon Theremin, hence the name of the instrument. He was a radio operator in World War I, and experimenting with radios and listening to radios, he discovered that if he moved in certain ways, that in fact he could create tones it is the only instrument ever invented that you don't touch at all when you play it. As you can see, there are two antennas. Now, these two antennas control the two things that you have to be able to control if you want to make music. That is pitch and volume. And here's how it works. First of all, these two spools that you see in here generate an electromagnetic field. And when I move my hand inside the electromagnetic field, it perturbs the invisible waves of the field, and that is translated into two things, pitch and volume. This antenna, the vertical antenna, controls just pitch. The closer my hand is to the antenna, the higher the note is that you hear coming out of the little speaker down below. As I move away, the note gets lower. The same principle applies to the volume antenna. I can control the volume of what you hear by the proximity of my left hand to this ring antenna. So when I move away, it gets louder. And as I move closer, it gets softer and softer and softer. The tension is just beginning. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I think something is happening. Now, this is not just any old theremin. This is the theremin that you have heard on the soundtracks of probably more than 50 motion pictures from the late 1940s through into the 1960s. This belonged to the late Dr. Samuel Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman played this instrument on many, many films, including for the soundtrack of The Day the Earth Stood Still, which was written by Bernard Herrmann. A wonderful soundtrack which really launched the theremin's career in science fiction because it was such an important film. Herman was a very demanding but very well classically trained musician and composer. He used two theremins which had not ever been done before. It was written out and you followed the notes. And if you didn't, Mr. Herman would immediately step in, because we have the outtakes, they still exist. Now, uh, what happened to the first theremin? Please, watch, Lionel. Don't go ahead, we're not doing linoleum. Once more, Lionel, we've got a very bad start on that one. Dr. Hoffman acquired this theremin in the very early 1930s in New York, and it is unique. Someone, a New York City band leader, we believe, he had the theremin integrated into one single cabinet, which meant that the theremin itself, the instrument, and all of its tubes, and the speaker, which is normally not part of the instrument. Speaker was usually somewhere else. He had it all integrated into this cabinet. We still don't know what it is or where it comes from, but there's something there. I think the reason why it inspires fear in us is because when we're frightened, our voices start to tremble, and we do the same kind of thing. It is very human, this instrument. I really love the theremin because it is a voice. For me, it is an extension of my voice. I've sung all my life, and it is an extension of my voice, except that it can sing higher and it can sing lower than it is possible for any human to sing. When RCA introduced their instrument in 1929, the big come on was, if you can hum or whistle a tune, 
you can play the theremin. This was a lie. It is extremely difficult to play. If you want to play a recognizable melody with accuracy and precision, you are going to have to work at it. I challenge you.